They are two as one. Together, they bring out the best in each other. Martin Smith and Michelle McDonald are Canada's defending ice dance champions. Tonight, they must beat the odds and the competition. Jacqueline Peter and Mark Janishak are desperately seeking gold, but it won't be easy. Penny Mann and Juan Carlos Noria are also gold medal threats, and tonight they and the rest of Canada's best skate for a national title, but Olympic controversy is in the air. CTV Sports presents the 1992 Royal Bank Canadian Figure Skating Championship from Moncton, New Brunswick. Hello everybody, I'm Tracy Wilson. Tonight, it's the ice dancing competition. Michelle McDonald and Martin Smith will be trying to defend their title. But they will be skating for more than just their title tonight. They'll be skating for the chance to represent Canada at the Winter Olympics in Albertville, France. Based on past performances at the World Championships, Canada has qualified to send two dance teams to the Olympics. But the Canadian Olympic Association has reserved the right to limit that entry to one team. For more, let's go to Rod Black. Tracy, for many months now, we, the media, the Canadian Figure Skating Association, the coaches, the skaters, and even the fans out there, assumed that the Canadians would be sending 15 skaters to the Olympic Games in Albertville, France. There would be three pairs teams, there would be two dance teams, there would be three men skating and two women. But according to Canadian Figure Skating Association President Bill Ostapchuk, who joins us now, the rules have changed significantly in the last 48 hours. And Bill, maybe you can bring us up to date on what has transpired. Well, what actually happened is we received uh, this week the uh, approved selections that were submitted uh, by the COA's uh, selection committee, which put certain restrictions on uh, the, uh, on the uh, ladies and also on the dance, where the possibility could be that uh, we could only send one in each of those two disciplines. Let's talk first about the ladies that occurred earlier today. Karen Preston winning, Jose Schwenard finishing second. Now, from what you have previously told us, had Jose Schwenard won, there would only be one lady going to Aberville. That is correct. Uh, that is what specifically was stated in the COA's approved um, uh, roster for that event. So the scenario developed all right for you, but you had to be bitterly disappointed finding out something like this where you have told so many skaters and told so many coaches and even the media that this was and these were the rules that were set down all of a sudden potentially you have to tell some people that hey you're not going to the olympics that's correct because actually right from last year certain skaters had not met the criteria established by the coa we then told them at the outset that if you met certain standards you would be uh, considered and nominated for the olympic team our concern is how would we tell if, if uh, Karen Preston had come second, how would you tell somebody that had worked very hard that you no longer can go? As we said, Karen winning, Jose finishing second, so they will go. But now there is an impact, we understand, on tonight's dance competition. The potential could actually happen in the dance event. You're right, that if Mark and uh, Jackie, because they were in the top 10 at uh, the World Championships last year, if they win, then they are the only team that will be sent in accordance with the approved selection criteria. Now, if they don't win and finish second, what happens? Then we can send two. Is there a rationale behind this? Uh, the Canadian Olympic Association, now we have attempted to contact some people. We hope to have some sort of word from the COA either tonight or tomorrow. Why has this happened? We, uh, again, I have asked the question. I was not given an answer yesterday when we found out the, that this was their final position and have asked for an answer, but at this time we cannot understand it because we did not have those restrictions put on either the uh, pairs or the men's disciplines. We can now select the individuals based on their placement of Canadians. Do you think they are putting an emphasis on winning when over the last few years we have heard so much talk about just participating? 
And this really hurts, you would have to think, if the scenario didn't develop or doesn't develop, hurt potential skaters down the road when they compete in 1994, not having the experience in these games. Well, actually, there must be something in their minds because they indicated in their letter to us that they looked at some other statistics. And what those statistics were, I don't know. But you're absolutely right. 94 is critical. And you, this, is our, this was our concern last year when we wrote to the president of the COA saying that we shouldn't be able to qualify a full team because the turnaround cycle is only two years. How unhappy are you? Very bitter. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill Ostapchuk, hopefully there will be a resolution to this. As I said before, we'll try to talk to somebody from the Canadian Olympic Association either tonight or tomorrow to find out some sort of resolution and why this, in fact, happened. Meanwhile, the ice dance competition will continue. Moncton Coliseum, where the ice dance final is set to go tonight. Now, for months, many have thought that Canada would be sending two ice dance teams to the Olympic Games in Albertville, France, because of qualification which was met. The Canadian Figure Skating Association has told skaters and coaches for a long time that they indeed would be sending two teams. We find out, and we have found out, as you have seen tonight already, that that is not necessarily the case. And we are joined on the phone line by Mr. Walter Sieber, the chairman of the Canadian Olympic Association Selection Committee. Mr. Sieber, maybe you could shed some light on the situation for us. Yes. There is a written agreement between the COA and the Canadian Figure Skating Association on the minimum performance criteria athletes must achieve in order to be eligible for nomination to the Olympic team by the Canadian Figure Skating Association. And uh, it is clearly said that uh, there is, we will accept automatically uh, the dance pair which would have finished in the top 12 in the world, uh, in the last world championship. So Peter Janocak finished 10th, and for that, if they would win tonight, would be automatically accepted. However, uh, there is a second uh, mention in that agreement, whereas we say that if this pair would be beaten by someone else, then uh, that Canadian champion would be selected. The problem we have here is that the selection committee has decided that on the dance, there are no pairs which are ranked top 12 in the world right now from the Canadian point of view, except Peter and Janoshak. So our decision is the following for tonight's uh, dance final. The Canadian champion, whoever it will be, will be automatically accepted by the COA. And we also have decided that if, in the case, if Peter Janoshak would come in second, we would also nominate them in addition to the Canadian champion because they were the one who earned Canada two entries at the Games. If Peter and Janoshak happen to finish third tonight, yes. what happens? Then we will stick to only one entry. When was this decision made and how come it differs so much from what the Canadian Figure Skating Association has told us? Uh, I must tell you, I, I do not understand why uh, there is a, a, a different opinion from the Canadian Figure Skating Association because uh, we have set uh, that agreement together, we have signed it together, and it is very clear, it states very clearly that all athletes who have not met the criteria at the World Championship will be subject to review and to final selection by the COA. And uh, that, that is absolutely nothing new. Is this a case of cutting back? It has nothing to do with cutting back. Uh, we, we have to make sure that all the written agreements we have signed with all the winter sports as well as summer sports federation uh, we are bound by this agreement and it has nothing to do with cutting back. I'd like to ask you a philosophical question yes. if I can and I know maybe you may not be the best person to uh, answer this but yeah. the Dublin inquiry over the last three years yeah. so many people in Canada have gone back to the grassroots level of let us compete and let us not think about winning. Yeah. Do you think this goes back a little bit and uh, takes us back into where we're saying only let the best, only let the elite compete, and of course with the uh, Winter Olympics two years down the road, wouldn't it be better for the Canadians to send two teams regardless so that we have experience for those 94 games in Lillehammer, Norway? 
Well, you know, we, the Dublin report had nothing to do with the selection criteria. We are still uh, top 16 in the world. Whoever demonstrate, demonstrate that to us, in principle, is eligible. But I think that the main issue here is that if we would have, uh, if we would have taken the agreement as it is, letter by letter, we would have 10 entries in the Olympic Games. And uh, we have already decided that we give the figure skating at least 12. Now they have already 13. And now tonight, of course, it's a question if uh, this additional pair will be there or not. Mr. Sieber, thanks for your time. It was a pleasure. Mr. Walter Sieber, the chairman of the selection committee, committee in uh, Montreal tonight where he says that Jacqueline Peter and Mark Janiszczak will go to the games if they finish one or two, and perhaps another team will be going as well. We'll have to wait and find out, and controversy looms over these Canadian figure skating championships. How many teams are going to be sent to the Olympics in the dance event from Canada? But what we do know is that Penny Mann and Juan Carlos Noria are the leaders after the original dance. Peters and Janiszczak are in second, with McDonald and Smith in third place. Now, the original dance is the second stage in the ice dancing competition. For this dance, the tempo has to be a polka, and the judges are looking for an exuberant, boisterous dance. Let's take a look back now at last night's winning original dance. my favorite tempo but those guys did a great job and you can see why they're the winners after the original dance when we come back the free dance final is our coverage of the 1992 royal bank canadian figure skating championships the ice dance final has just started penny mann and juan carlos noria the leaders going into this event let's pick up the live action now and join rod black and debbie wilkes well, thank you, Tracy, and yes, we are partway through this performance by Allison McLean and Conrad Schaub. We're coming into the final few seconds of the program, an authentic Argentinian tango, Man Chases Woman. McLean, 
21 and Conrad Schaub 22. They are from Edmonton, Alberta. They were ninth at the Canadians last year, eighth the year before, and they're still, Debbie, a relatively young tandem. More from the Ice Dance Final and the Moncton Coliseum when we return after these words. In Edmonton, Alberta, from Conrad Schaub and Allison McLean, and their marks for technical right, merit. From the, your and as I mentioned, very the young, 21, 22. Here. They've only really been competing for a couple of years at this level. Their marks were good enough to place them second for the moment. But up on the ice, Dara Bailey and Rock LeMay. They were fourth at the 91 Canadians in Saskatoon. Their pre-dance, worth 50% of the total mark, is a pirate story. He rescues her from a ship and they fall in love.
Dara Bailey and Rock LeMay. A little pirate love story. Here in a land where probably centuries ago there may have even been a few pirates at one time. Very handsome couple on the ice. They, they have terrific rapport as they skate. I watched Rock's face smiling with the audience, making that kind of connection, and they seem to talk throughout the number as well. Dara's hometown is Queensville, Ontario, and Rock hails from Claridge Creek, Ontario. I like the way they use some interesting moves to highlight the music of the program. They incorporated dance lifts well without making them too obvious or too highlighted. And uh, the marks for Bailey and LeMay. Fourth at the Eastern Divisionals, they said it was a huge disappointment, their performance there. They had a mission, they said, when they came to the Canadians here in Moncton. You see the marks for technical merit. And the marks for artistic impression to follow. And as we have mentioned throughout these Canadian championships, don't be fooled by the mark itself. Remember, it's the ordinal placement that really counts. And uh, Dara Bailey and Rock LeMay getting first place ordinals for this free dance final. Each one of the seven judges used the marks out of a perfect 6.0 to allocate a ranking for every skater. Because the this portion of the competition, the free dance, is only the final 50%, although they have won the free dance at this moment, there's the other, the earlier 50% of the competition that has them down in second spot at this point. We'll be back with more of the Ice Dance Final from the 1992. This is Jennifer Nacito and Brad Hopkins. Jennifer's from Markham, Ontario. Brad is from Scarborough. They were eighth last year. The Ice Dance at the Canadians in Saskatoon.
Jennifer Nacido, Brad Hopkins, coached by Roy Bradshaw, and their marks after this. Lift me up a little higher. And to Jennifer Nacido and to Brad Hopkins. Take a breather as they await their marks for technical merit. 5.0 is the high, 4.7 the low, 4.6 in there too. I think this is the best program I have ever seen this couple do. Free, loose, quite wonderful, very passionate, lots of emotion. They seem to be expanding and getting a lot of confidence with each outing. Final selection by the COA. And, uh, now we go to Chantal Loyer and Justin Bell. Both are 22 years old. Justin's hero in skating, Robin Cousins. Chantel's heroes in skating, Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall.
Chantal Loyer and uh, Justin Bell. Let's face it. Right Justin now. Bell, they were 11th last year at the 91 Canadians. Debbie? Very exciting time for ice dancing. It's amazing how a few skaters can take four basic turns and four basic edges. Forward, outside, forward, inside. Backward, outside, backward, inside. The turns being three turns, which are shaped exactly like a three in mathematics. A bracket, which is an inside-out three turn. Rockers and counters, and turn them in, uh, into ice dancing. Kind of like having eight keys on a piano and making all that wonderful music. We should tell you that Loyer and Bell are in the middle of the pack right now with a final flight still to come, and all eyes in this rink. Johnny Esau on... Martin and Michelle, McDonald and Smith. We have a microphone problem with Johnny Esau's microphone. We will get to Johnny in just a moment. And Johnny, I think we have things straightened out now. And okay. again, Martin and Michelle, all eyes are on them tonight. Well, the, the all eyes are not on them. All mm -hmm. the eyes are on Peter and Janicek. Because here's what happened. If Peter and Janicek stay in second place as they are right now, it means that we get to send two dance couples to the Olympics. If they move up to first or down to third, we only send one dance couple to the Olympics. Now, by changing those minimum standards, the Canadian Olympic Association Committee has put themselves and the CFSA in jeopardy. If, as I said, if Peter and Janicek stay in second, we get two teams, one up or one down, we get one team. Now, you tell me there isn't going to be somebody calling for an investigation if that happens to work that way, or are we just that lucky? Are you, are you saying that... Uh the Canadian Figure Skating Association could come under some kind of uh, questionable uh, problem by saying, is this championship fixed? Well, the rule says that our champions of last year are now in second place, and that's where they've got to be in order for us to get two dance, and that's the only way we can get two dance teams to the Olympics. Can't you imagine people sitting out there and imagining all kinds of things? And what about this poor team, Penny Mann and Juan Carlos Noria, the leaders at this point? Well, they've got to stay there. Otherwise, we're, we're down to one team and they go. I think what is more perhaps confusing than anything, and if you just joined us, there is a controversy that has been boiling over the last 48 hours, it seems, with the Canadian Olympic Association and the Canadian Figure Skating Association regarding qualification standards and qualification for the Olympic Games. Originally... It was stated that two ice dance teams would be going to the Olympics. That's what we all thought. But that has changed. Peter and Janishak will go to the Olympics if they finish first or second. If they finish third, only one team goes, the champion. And if they do finish second, two teams go. The most disappointing thing, I think, would be these teams on the ice right now have no idea about this, and they all assume that two teams are going. In, in fairness to the CFSA, they have kept this under wraps for several days, I understand, in order not, not to cause any problems either within the skaters or to influence the judging. Well, if you heard my voice, the tone of my voice on our opening show on Wednesday night, you must have realized that I was on to something and, and uh, held it back for the sake of the skating competition and the sake of the skaters. But, you know, dance... Dance medals are tough to win. We went 25 years before Wilson and McCall finally grabbed the dance medal. And, and here we got a chance to send two to the, to the Olympics, and they're saying no. And they're, saying, they're not saying it's money. They're not saying it's numbers. They're not saying it's anything. I want to speak from the skater's point of view. These skaters have trained all their lives for the chance to be able to make the Olympic team. I tell you, I'd be pretty upset if I found out that despite the fact that I'd qualified according to the CFSA standards and what I had been told all year long, I'm not going. Do you think the Canadian Figure Skating Association then may be guilty of assuming 
that there were these two spots all along? No, because they have a written agreement, and they and they they questioned it. And on the 13th, when the announcement was made, they questioned it again. On the 17th, it was reviewed by the COA committee at the request of the CFSA. So they can't. It's not a question of miscommunication. They got the message across. They just didn't get an answer. Well, let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Maybe she has one for us. Well, I, cer I certainly don't have any answers. Uh, I just think that there are reasonable people on the COA, and I think they just cannot uh, send a full team. They have to send a full team. They can't exclude anybody from the team. They have to be fair. Skaters stay in an extra four years to make the Olympic Games. Well, you can imagine to take that away from them is unthinkable. Also, the Olympics two years away. Experience is the most important thing in, in any competition, in any athletic event. Well, the skaters are warming up behind me, and uh, actually, it's making me nervous. It's been a long time since I've been down this close to the competition. When we come back, it'll be the free dance final. Starting off, Michelle McDonald and Martin Smith, they're the defending champions. They will be up right after we come back. the Moncton Coliseum and bracing ourselves for this final flight of skaters in this ice dance final the defending champions are on the ice Michelle McDonald and Martin Smith they come into this with a lot of pressure on their shoulders third after the original dance Most dance teams do new programs each year. So have Michelle and Martin. However, they have elected for this competition to redo the Blood and Sand program from last year. Martin is a matador who's married very upstanding citizen, a hero, in fact. And he falls in love with a beautiful peasant girl.
given Martin and Michelle a, a kind of a gentleness, an ease of moving across the ice. They are the Canadian champions, and they would love to be at the Olympics. Will they or won't they? Michelle McDonald and Martin Smith will have their marks as Man and Noria prepare to skate too. Michelle McDonald and Martin Smith waiting with their coaches, Mary Jane Stong and Bernie Ford. This year of competition and experience, lots of training, has smoothed out a lot of those rough edges that probably were a little more obvious than they would have liked last year. They are very passionate in their skating. Facial expressions are choreographed almost as much as the feet. They finished 16th at the Worlds, and perhaps that is the hinging factor right now in this whole dance controversy. Had they perhaps finished in the top half, we wouldn't have that right now. Boy, and some real controversy in the judging. Mm -hmm. Five fours. Four. Marks for artistic impression coming up. And one 5.9, a couple of five fives, some five sevens. Again, we talk ordinals, however. And we talk about the ranking that each judge places on each pair. They have first place votes from each of the seven judges up to this point. Remembering there are still several competitors to skate. A whole last flight to follow. And for now, McDonald and Smith are on top. And on ice, Martin Patinode. Eric Massé. They are from Montreal, Quebec. This is their first year competing as seniors. There are certain skating classics that are chosen from music. Scheherazade by Rimsky Korsakov is certainly one of them.
and have these two arrived. First year as seniors, Martin Patinode and Eric Massé. Fourth after the original dance. We will find out what marks are in store for them. We will also see Peter and Janishak, who are up next. No, Shelly Post. Hey, they have to be happy. Oh, what a thrill. I mean, when you come to your first Canadian championship, first of all, you don't expect it to be senior, and second of all, you don't expect to be fourth going into the free dance. There are the marks for technical merit. And for artistic impression. Around the same range of marks, but as far as ordinals and placement by judges, that's what's most important. And the ordinals are twos across the board, which puts them second behind Martin Smith and Michelle McDonald. And this is the team that we've been talking about for the last hour or so. Jacqueline Peter and Mark Janishak trying to win a Canadian title, but also in the middle of what seems to be a very confusing controversy. Music from Procopius Cinderella. Choreographed by Taller Cranston. In fact, this is the same music that Taller used at the 1974 World Championships in Munich. They stood second after the original dance.
them not only in how they skate but in how they interpret the music the kinds of steps they use even the look Jacqueline Peter, Mark Janishak. They were second last year behind McDonald and Smith. They felt last year they should have won. Maybe they did this year. We'll find out when we return to the Moncton Coliseum. Jacqueline is from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Mark from Bramalea, Ontario. They've been compared to the DeShaney's many times before. We can certainly understand why. It is unusual, to say the least. Although they have both their programs choreographed by Taller France, and they parted company in the last couple of weeks. However, they are held very strongly together by their coach, Roy Bradshaw. And remember what we have been saying all along. If they finish first, only one... Canadian team, dance team, will be represented in Albertville, France at the Olympics. If they finish second, two will go. If they finish third, only the champion will go. There are the marks for technical merit. And for artistic impression, you heard Jacqueline say a 5-9. There it is. And again, Debbie, the Ordinals. It's a split decision, four to three at this point, just comparing them to McDonald and Smith. They have four first place judges, three second. It's the reverse for McDonald and Smith, which puts Jackie and Mark in first place at this point. However, the leaders are about to skate. And the ordinal placement could differ again and could change things around. Even There's moving one. McDonald Smith to second. Mm -hmm. There's one Carlos Noria you just saw, and there is Penny Mann last year at the Canadians. Jackie and Mark, very modern.
And Juan Carlos Noria. And for a moment, I thought I was in the middle of a movie scene. And I'm sure you did too. We will have their marks upcoming. Olympic berth on the line. A Canadian championship on the line. And it will all come into the hands of the judges when we return. I'm struggling to know what I would do in this situation. Boy, I, this is, and that's the thing about ice dancing. Before, many times has been not criticized, but I guess it has been criticized for subjectivity at times because it's such a stylistic type of a performance. It certainly is, and each one of those judges has a personal preference for style, for music. What does ice dancing mean to them? And the marks for artistic impression. And as far as rankings and placement are concerned, Mann and Noria, because of the ordinals, are now in second place behind Peter and Janishak with one couple to skate. Enjoy yourself a second. Yeah, sure. Hello, Jose Noria. <laughs> he was saying hello to his father, a Venezuelan badminton coach who came to Moncton 16 years ago. They liked Canada so much, they stayed. And we're glad they did. And now, final dance team of the ice, on the ice tonight, Jennifer Boyce and Michelle Brunet. Fifth after the original dance. I would think they have to pull off a miracle to win this. It would be a miracle. The numbers indicate that it's not possible. They cannot go from fifth to first, but they could have an impact on those first three places. If they were to win the free dance, it would change the order of the top three.
thing for certain tonight, Debbie, we've seen a lot of variety in this final flight. One thing that hasn't been very different from couple to couple, despite styles and music selection, has been the great emphasis on drama. Skating Club. Jennifer goes to Algonquin College. Michelle is studying to become a phys ed teacher. And I think tonight, Debbie, they were seventh at the Canadians last year. Something they won't forget for a while. Particularly when you skate last. Ooh, it's always the best place for a skater, depending on your attitude. The two leaders comparing notes. So, like, I mean, I sat here Mark Janishak. similar to how you're feeling. Going to the beat, like, I was going to be skating. And then one other team skated, and it was like, I saw it before my very eyes. So I can't, I don't want to get things worked out. And here are the marks. For Boyce and Brene, 20 years old and 21 years old. 5.2, 5.1, 5.4, two more 5.2s, and 5.0, 5.4 for technical merit and artistic impression. May not make any impression on that top three. Marks from 5.1 to 5.4. The ordinals will keep them in the middle of the pack and will make no difference upon the top three. Jacqueline Peter and Mark Janishak are now the Canadian champions. They will head to the Olympic Games. This morning. And so here are the official results. Jacqueline Peter and Mark Janishak have won the Canadian Ice Dance Championship tonight here in Moncton. And it was very, very close between the top three. And you see the final few seconds of Janishak and Peter's performance. Last year, they were unhappy that they finished second at the Canadians. They went on to finish 10th at the World Championships in Munich. And now they will represent Canada and wear the Maple Leaf in a few weeks' time. And uh, they're down below with Tracy Wilson. Jackie and Mark. Jackie, I've seen you skate this program a few times. I think tonight was the best I've ever seen you skate. Oh, by far. We went out there and all we had to do, all we wanted to do was skate well. It's been a rough week for us. And all we really wanted to do was skate well. Second, go to the Olympics. Third, and win the Canadian title. Okay. Congratulations to you both. Good luck at the Olympics. Thank you very much. 